Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi. Welcome to today's lesson. Our topic of discussion is reproduction in plants and animals. And this is a topic in Form 3 Biology. During the last lesson, we went through the chapter objectives and we did a brief introduction of the meaning of reproduction and the types of reproduction. Today, we'll continue with our discussion on the same and specifically, uh, we are going to look at the importance of reproduction. In this case, we are asking ourselves, what is the importance of reproduction? Why is reproduction necessary? Why is reproduction significant? So it can either be put in those different uh, ways. Now, the first um, importance is that reproduction is important for procreation. And procreation is the ability of organisms to replace themselves. We know that uh, organisms cannot live forever. With the time, they will die and they need to be replaced. Otherwise, if those organisms are not replaced, then the species may become extinct. And therefore, it is important that there is continuity of species. So, we are saying that um, uh, organisms need to be replaced when they die to ensure continuity. To ensure continuity of species or prevent extinction. Prevent extinction. We have heard of situation whereby some organisms have become extinct from the earth. And once they become extinct, there is no way of getting them back. So the best way to ensure that species do not become extinct is by ensuring that there is reproduction. So that organisms, when they are alive, they can give rise to uh, offspring of their own kind for continuity. Number two, uh, reproduction is also important for quality improvement. is important for quality improvement. What do I mean by this? Now, you'll find that uh, once organisms have been formed, uh, they are faced with a lot of environmental challenges. And it is important that these organisms become adapted to these environmental challenges so that their survival can continue, so that the survival is not compromised. In this case, what happens is that reproduction ensures that there is mixing of genetic material. There is mixing of genes between different organisms of the same species to ensure that there are variations, there are new varieties being made. And those variations uh, enhance adaptability. They ensure that uh, the new organisms that are created, they are more adapted than their parents or than their, uh, yeah, than their parents. So basically, we are saying that they need to be of better quality so that maybe if it is the resistance to diseases, they become more resistant. Yeah? If it's in terms of exploitation of different habitats, they are better placed than their parents. So in this case, we are saying that quality improvement occurs through mixing of genes or through mixing of 
genetic material which brings about variation and then we can say that variation leads to adaptability to environmental conditions so basically those are two importance uh, of reproduction now from here uh, we want to understand that uh, the basis or the foundation of reproduction lies in cell division for organisms to reproduce their cells must be able to divide and therefore increase in number so in this case we are going to mention here that cell division is the basis of reproduction and therefore we cannot understand reproduction if we do not understand cell division so we are going to look at cell division now the term cell division just as it states there is a cell involved and there is division that is involved and when these cells uh, reach maturity they divide into what we call the daughter cells daughter cells are the offspring of the mature cells and this division leads to an increase in the number of cells so when the number of cells increase basically we are saying that the population also is increasing so we can see that cell division this is the multiplication of the cells and it happens that mature cells divide into daughter cells which later mature and continue dividing so in other words we are saying that uh, cell division is a continuous process so the mature cells divide they form the daughter cells then those daughter cells later with the time they will mature and also they'll continue with the division so in the process is a continuous process that leads to the multiplication of the cells is a continuous pr process that leads to multiplication of the cells now from here i want us to look at the types of cell division one of the objectives of this chapter is to understand the two types of cell division and also to be able to describe them now we have two types of cell division and the first one is mitosis and the second one is meiosis so we are going to look at the two in more details starting with mitosis now when we talk of mitosis we say that is the type of cell division whereby uh, the daughter cells that is the cells that have been formed 
have the same number of chromosomes as their parent cell. We shall look at what is a chromosome. Or you can say is whereby uh, the daughter cells have the same genetic material as the parent cell. So, you can say that this is the type of cell division. Let's have an example. For example, if the parent cell has four pairs of chromosomes, then the daughter cell should also have four pairs of chromosomes. That means that the daughter cell has the same genetic material as the parent cell. also has four pairs. Now, where does this type of cell division occur? This type of cell division occurs in body cells, what we call somatic cells. All the other body cells except the gametes. The cells of the skin, the cells of the liver, right? The cells of the lungs, every part of our body except the gametes. So we have the type of cell division that occurs there being mitosis. And it's the one that brings about growth and development. Now, so we can say that it occurs in somatic cells. That is body cells except the gametes. It doesn't occur in gametes. Now, this type of cell division also occurs in stages. And we are going to look at those stages. We are going to look at the stages of mitosis as our first type of cell division. Now, there are about uh, five stages that are involved, and those stages need to follow each other in a certain order. Now, the first stage, we refer to it as the interface. Second stage, we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and finally, telophase. So those are the five stages of mitosis. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we are going to look at uh, what happens in each one of these stages, but for now, we are going to stop there and have a short assignment based on what we have learned. So the first question in our assignment for today state and explain the importance of reproduction. Number two, define the term cell division. Number three, name the two types of cell division. And finally, 
name the five stages of mitosis. So we are going to stop there until the next lesson. See you then. Thank you.